hey, if you want to create a pattern that can follow any kind of a curve or maybe go around an object in a complex way, we're talking about the pattern on path. And this is simply a feature that could follow a curved path. Let's talk about how to do this. And then let's talk about some more advanced solutions. I have a plate with a hole in it. I'm going to go up and create a sketch. I'm going to create a spline or a series of arcs, whatever you want to do. If you're just doing a line, then you may probably want to look at the rectangular pattern because that's going to be a little simpler and you don't have to sketch everything. So I have my spline. I'll hit enter on the keyboard. It finishes. You can see the spline there. So we'll finish the sketch. We'll go to create and pattern on path. Now, what you want to choose in your dialog, you can choose if you've seen some of my recent pattern videos, I explain some of the differences here, but with features, we're going to select that from the timeline, which is this hole. And next we'll come to path and choose the spline. All right. So there's some things to fill out here. Do you want it to go the full extent? When you have a simple curve that ends, you can just drag it to the end or ending and it's going to give you this total distance of where this ends. Next, if we go up to quantity, we can choose how many we're placing. Notice that we are using the extent option. So extent goes the full duration. If we wanted to do the spacing in between each hole, we could do it that way, where now we have a, let's say, 15 millimeter spacing between each hole. Coming back to the extent option, we go the full length of this curve. You are allowed to extend past. So if this value goes beyond your spline or curve length, then it's going to continue on. If you do go past, it's going to basically continue off in a straight line. So not sure if that's going to help you. If you choose the suppress option, you'll get these little check boxes that lets you specifically choose ones that you don't want to solve or to be included. If you click them again, it will it'll bring it back. Next, the starting point. This is incredibly confusing. I would love some feedback from the community. If you have a great way of using this and you have some insight, please share it with me. A bunch of Googling, even chat GPT. No one seems to have a great explanation for how you would use this. The one thing I will say, it's a percentage. If you do, let's say 0.01%, you'll notice that it shifts. It's actually starting this 1% further along. But what's tricky is the curve starts changing. So the, not only is the starting point a little later, so if we do 20%, you can see it's, it's actually going to start differently, but it changes the curve dramatically. I would pretty much avoid the start point and instead create the sketch exactly where you want your instances to start. Next, when it comes to, we're going to talk about this solving pattern in just a minute. It doesn't do anything with these simple holes. So if it doesn't really change anything, you're fine. But I would choose optimized whenever you can for the compute type. If you're solving something and it's cutting down not correctly, try going to adjust and having it resolve and see if that fixes the features that you want. Check out my rectangular pattern where I explain the adjust feature. Clicking OK, it solves, and now we have holes along this path. Let's look at something that's slightly more complicated. This is a cool example that Brad Tallis did on his channel. I really liked this. He's creating a belt, so I've created a simple sketch for the belt. Then I've added an additional feature for the belt. Let's do, let's go to pattern on path. We're going to do this solid. We're going to do the path. I'm going to drag it a little bit. It's solving pretty well. Good. Just be sure your start point isn't set to something strange. You might get some really weird previews. I definitely have gotten that where just a playing with the start point kind of creates this just crazy results. What I want to do when you have a continuous loop, this is where dragging becomes problematic. I can't just drag it to the end easily. Instead, what I want to do is type in the value for this chain. If I were to go back to the original sketch and simply double click on it, it will give me the entire loop. And then down below is a measurement. So it's 436.4. That's my overall length. And there's other ways you can get that with measure. But what I'm going to do is go type in that value. And so now it's going the full length over that extent. And I get how many instances I pick. The instances does include the original. So if you want 
to add 10, you need to put in 11. So if I put in 25, you'll notice that it's solving really strange. It's keeping the orientation exactly the same as the original. So just this is where you'll want to toggle the path direction. And so it actually is intelligent and tries to solve along the way. So toggle that and it should give you the one that you want. I will choose optimized out of habit. It looks like it's going crazy. I don't want that. I'm going to hit adjust and click OK and it solves. What you want to avoid is when you create your spline or your path, I did it to the corner. And you'll notice that when I start adding these instances and solving, it's kind of like spinning around on itself. It's not giving me a great solution. And so that's why Fusion 360 School, he suggested that instead of doing it this way, you come in to your sketch and make sure that it is aligned to the center of this feature. So when I'm creating it, I'll make sure that it's aligned or I add the constraints to get this to the center and then come in and create my spline. And now when I come to solve this, I should get a better behavior with that feature solving along this path. What's great is performing how I would expect it to. Hey, so I've created a series of cheat sheets and guides for assemblies, beginner tips, sketching, keyboard shortcuts. I continue to add to this. It is free. All you have to do is click the link below and you'll join my email list as well. If you don't like emails, no problem. Just unsubscribe, but check this out. It's free for the community. Just like the circular and rectangular patterns, you can come in and create a pattern on path, but you can do this with an existing body that might consist of a bunch of features. So instead of picking everything from the timeline, I can simply select the body and it should solve along this path. We'll create the extent, we'll drag it along, looks good. And just in case I fail to mention this, if you go for less value, it's going to solve along the curve, but it's just not going to use the full length of that curve. So you do have some control on using the full length of the curve or less. But in this case, what we're solving for are bodies. And now we have a series of bodies. And it's gonna behave just the same way with components in your assembly. Let's say that you're wanting to do a pattern on path, but your feature is broken up or it consists of a lot of additional geometry that you don't actually wanna include. So if I go to features and I choose this extrude, and I wanna pattern on this path, it's trying to pattern these as well, which is not good. That's not what I want. Uh, I don't want to include these along this path. Instead, I want just this lower rectangle. But these are all part of a feature. So you could go break up your feature and change it. Or you can actually use instead an option called faces. Now, I did a rectangle just to remind you that you do have to be careful to select all the faces that you want. So if there's fillets or additional features, you'll want to select all of that as well. But this allows me to break it up so I don't have to use these other rectangles that were done in the original feature. I'll click OK, and now it just patterned that. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. That's Pattern on Path. I'll see you tomorrow.